come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> Welcome back, ladies and germs, to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast. Every Saturday night it happens on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, TuneIn Radio, and more. Every Saturday we talk about a movie and then sit down and... Well, I guess we watch a movie. Then we sit around and talk about it for your listening pleasure and uh, edification. These are the internet radio superstar irregulars. It's Holly. Travis. Founding father, Tom Keen, <laughs> here for a guest appearance. <laughs> Sean and I'm Colin and we don't make a big deal about it. <laughs> no, we, no, we don't. <laughs> it's the guests who usually make the big deal about it. But <laughs> welcome back, Tom. Happy birthday. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So this uh, week, Sean picked the movie. So, Sean, what did we watch? Week being the. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> oh! Oh! <laughs> Burn. Sorry, sorry. We watched uh, the 1997 classic. <laughs> classic. How do you spell that? C E R A P. No. Uh, scream 2. Scream 2. Scream 2. Key on ass. Scream, scream for more. Scream Was two. that anywhere scream near? Again. Oh, did they Fucking. say scream, scream for more? That would have been good. God damn it, Sean. What, that might have been one of the like filming titles for this movie because they had a few weird ones. Like, scream the sequel, scream again, scream for more. So it says it's twice as hip. Um, <laughs> twice as hip, scary, and entertaining. Scary and entertaining, says Radio New York. <laughs> I was going to say, what are W-B-A-I, the, Radio New York. What are the slashes? Like, who's, uh, who's Delicious, the diabolic, please? diabolical, and fun, Rolling Stone. So these people are lying. <laughs> See, this is a problem with millennials, right? They're going to pick Ooh. movies like fucking Scream 2. Ooh. Like, you could pick, like... You could pick. No, oh, Sean could have picked. I got scream. called a millennial. All right. <laughs> fight <laughs> words. Hey, s- fight Sean words. could have picked Scream. And so we could have talked about how great, like, Scream, like, we And it's invented. the 20th anniversary. Right, 20th of scream scream anniversary of Scream. We could have talked about how Scream kind of. I'm like, trying to get a jump on the next the, year, the, 20th anniversary of Scream the, 2 pieces. You know, we did the, the, before the, everybody else. the horror the genre. We could have done Scream 3, which was a no, shitty movie and no, made fun of it. We couldn't have done Scream 3. We could have done Scream 4, which is a reboot of the Scream series. Don't tempt him. Sean likes Scream 3. We could have Scream 4, which is a reboot of the Scream series, which Scream failed four. miserably. Garbage. But instead, he chose the so, mediocre okay. at now, best Scream 2. All right, all right, all right. But because. I want to know why. I want to know why. Now, because. Now, on the Freak Show, most of the time, if we want to discuss uh, a movie that's part of a series or a franchise, we usually only get one shot at it. Unless it's like uh, Halloween or Friday the 13th, a longer series where it's got like 10 movies in it. But still, we've only done like one Halloween, yeah, one, one child's We've play. done two Halloweens. Have we've we done yeah. one Friday Oh, yeah, the we did Halloween 3. That's Halloween not three a Halloween. Halloween 3 and 6. We did the two worst Halloweens <laughs> yeah, on this worst. show. And it's your fault. <laughs> it's it's your fault. <laughs> <laughs> I picked them both. (laughs) But we usually only get one shot at it. And I figured uh, I like, uh, spoiler alert, I like shitty movies. I mean, gotcha. Technically, some are shitty, but I like uh, I like Scream Two. It's my favorite of this series, so I figured we could pick this. We'll obviously discuss the entire series because that's what we usually do when we pick one from a franchise. Usually, so I figured we can cover all the ground. But specifically, I want to talk about Scream Two because this one is my favorite of the Scream series. See, I kind of thought that's why I picked this one. You had bought like the Scream box set, had already watched Scream One. <laughs> one wasn't like... in the case. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <fuck. laughs> or like. Or, like, you went and went, like, oh, shit. And you just, like, grabbed a random movie. Uh, I, I honestly... Like, there was a so- fire at my house, and the only movie I could grab before I ran out was Scream 2. Like, I'm this surprised is it was on Blu-ray. I, I, I thought it'd be on, like, DVD burn, or something like that, you know. So, I, uh, okay, so, like, okay, obviously, let's talk about Scream, right? The sure. first movie, just for a tad, just to get the history yeah, I remember sitting in a panel with George Romero. You were on a panel with George Romero? Wow. No, sitting in a uh, panel. In with. with sitting in a, yeah. He was on a panel. Sitting you amongst, were in the room. Uh, the greats. And George, <laughs> was anybody from George Romero said, and I quote, that everybody got the first Scream script and nobody would do it. And that's why Wes Craven did it. <laughs> like, no, 
not even and not even George Romero. Like yeah. I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah, like George that? Romero could have used Scream. I yeah, think. I know. <laughs> but know? I don't think right. that's the thing that nobody. Well, did you not hear what the the original title was? Scary movie. Yes. Oh. So when it went around, it was called Scary Movie. That's stupid. Yeah, and I think everybody. Well, I mean, the person who saw something in it must have been the Harvey Weinstein. The Weinstein's, right? yeah, because there was a bidding war for the script when it first came out. It got out, and it was between them and someone else, and yeah, they paid probably through the nose for it at the time. And this is the first thing that Kevin Williamson wrote. First thing he wrote, yeah. And he went on. We know him now from uh, Dawson's Creek Dawson's and the Vampire Creek. Diaries. Yeah, and he tried to re like on. Jamie Lee Curtis hired him to try to <laughs> renew the Halloween series. Yeah, and, yeah. Well, Did, because because of Scream, right? Did he right. write the Faculty? He yes. wrote. Yes, he wrote yep. the Faculty. So and I, I know hate what you Kevin did Williams last movies. summer. I think he did the, at least the first. I know Teach, he did last yeah, summer. Yeah, Teaching Miss Tingle, he, which also, like... Which was actually, technically, that, that's the first thing he wrote. Well, he but wrote you know how me. he stole those ideas from this female author. God, I wish I could remember her Lewis name. Lois Duncan? But is that... Lois Duncan? Yeah, Teaching Miss Tingle was... Uh, I believe so, because was, it was... Uh, called... Uh, Killing, Killing Mrs. Mrs. Tingle. Tingle. I don't think Miss. Oh, T- I don't think Tingle. That I think was, was his Mr. Something. Title. Yes. Yeah. But, yeah, but yeah. the original novel right. that so he like Lois Duncan, off. because that's who also wrote. I know what you did last summer. Yeah. So, so he's Kevin Williamson is no- yeah. notorious for like, hey, this fucking lady like writes. Yeah, man. Why the hell? Like, I'll you- just dump it into she, do Kevin she, Williamson. Yeah. She hates or Williams his writing. Like she hates. Yep, I know what son, you did last summer. So she's not a fan of 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 him adapting her work. Yeah. But people buy the rights to it. He gets to. Why don't we do like I know what he did last summer instead of Scream Two? Well, well, I mean, it's just as bad. It's Kevin Williamson. Like the guy to me, Kevin Williamson. Very nineties. He's the guy that to me literally put a fucking like nail in the coffin of slasher movies. It's like this genre is over. Get out the old fucking ghost movies, or you know, like. (laughs) Well, I mean, but that's 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 the thing that he had going for him was the fact that he was able to sit there as like because I mean when Scream came out, I remember sitting there going like fuck. I should have written this movie because <laughs> yeah. this is like you know like I could have written it. I've seen all these Dude, movies the, and like what if I was in a horror movie? That's basically yeah. the conceit that he had, right? And my characters are aware of the For, technical universe that they live in. I yeah. horror movies it's, exist. It's like the Clerks. Scream is the Clerks of horror movies, where it's something for the fan. It's such a fan like it's talking specifically to these fucking people well, that mostly, know Jimmy. you know. Jamie Kennedy and his like breakdown of the horror genre. Well, his yeah. character, he, he is, I mean, yeah. That, yeah, but yeah. I mean, but that's the thing that it's it's like it's made by a fan, but somehow it transcended that. I mean, Scream yes. became like a runaway crazy, crazy gigantic hit. hit. Numbers going up every weekend from yeah, word I remember. of mouth and everything. Yeah, I mean, it brought horror back in yeah. like a huge way because horror yeah. had died out in the yeah because this was the the mid to late night. What ninety six? Right, this is ninety six or uh, Scream, Scream was ninety six. Yes, I'll be Scream, honest. Scream two is ninety six. I saw Scream one and two in the theaters. And you don't even go to see horror. And movies. I don't see horror movies. Yeah, exactly. See, yeah, at some point it was in his life, maybe you passed that well, point. The, at some point dude, in your life, this was. It's the fucking ghost face, man. It's like the Dollar General store ghost. Like, uh, I, you know, that's the old. Because I mean, even nowadays they try to make ooh hatchet and and uh, you know they keep on. Like, well, what they're, mask they're, looks good? Clown well, mask? Well, that's what they're trying uh, to create, uh, like... Baby ma- giant baby cube Indelible, mask. iconic characters, and I... I mean, Scream exactly. might be one of the last ones it that is. has done it, because that is... Uh, it's identififiable to like everyone. Like you, because can... everyone saw it. Yeah. In, in fucking, I mean, it was like the che- they made. I mean, number one, Don Post or whoever is a genius for taking a fucking five dollar <laughs> costume and now it's a like a twenty thirty dollar licensed thing. It's like <laughs> you fucking bastards. <laughs> like that was the cheapest costume genius. for Halloween. <laughs> well, and they now found you gotta that... get it. Now it's gotta be like orange. Huh? Or they like... found that costume, I think, because um, they didn't have a costume when they were like preparing this movie to be made. And and during location scouting for some of the houses in, I think, Santa Rosa, where they were going to originally shoot this, they found in one of the set photos, they saw the mask. Like somebody, because it was a fun world mask. It, w- it existed before the movie was there. Oh, yeah. And they saw the mask in the picture, and they were just like, hey, what about this? This looks creepy. Like, why? what, what is the status of this? Can we get this? And they ended up licensing it from Phone World and using it in the movie. That's just so it was like wild, right? That's like some kind of serendipity then, because right? I know it ended up being titled Scream. But there's the painting by Edward Munch, right? Yeah. The, the Scream. Where Edward Munch like, is the Scream. Yeah, I mean, like, that's kind of... Because the, the movie got its title from the original 
the movie that became Scary Movie, mm. the title for that one was Scream If You Know What I Did Last Friday the 13th or something like yeah, that. Like last and Halloween. they switched the titles. I don't. Well, I mean, they would have had to. Scream they, they to the have. horror one and Scary Movie to the other one. No, I don't think. It they, was something like that. No, it no, is it like was, they flipped the titles. He, well, no, they had Scary Movie before. I think it was probably Weinstein's. They didn't like the name of Scary Movie. So they got rid of it, yeah, it was, and gave it, it Scream. But Scary Movie... Like picked it up, like yeah, because they was, just got it from them, well, but it didn't go the other way. But well, he is right. A, a scary movie was supposed to be called Scream. If you know what I did last yeah, they Halloween just took the or whatever, scream the fuck. and said yeah. let's switch the titles. That was a cause, well, there wasn't a switch because those anyway? happened way after this. You gotta go check that. No, out. there was a there was another like after Scary Movie. There was another one. I can't fucking think what it was yeah. called, but it did try it to do that. Sort of yeah, long combine long everything in the title yeah, and there yeah, you blah, go. Blah, 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 blah. Something similar. Yeah. yeah, those are the really bad. Like there's like parody movies, like the scary movies, oh. and like not another team movie. Movie. But then there's the I know what you did last summer scream if you know uh, like yeah, how's, yeah those are the this, worst ones the same way to me scream put a nail in the coffin of slasher movie so did scary movie put it like a nail in the coffin of like the funny parody like air the sucker brother yeah, yeah like the the silly goofy comedy like no more fucking hot shots for you people that was too fun <laughs> now we're yeah. just whipping out all the fucking toys well the zucker remember. brothers ended up doing like after the wayans brothers did two I, scary yeah, movies the zucker they, brothers zucker brothers did, did the the three four and whatever we're on right now and look what came off of that there's like fucking epic movie date movie there was like yeah, those are the now garbage they're... of the those are Absolutely. the worst ones oh like yeah. the starving games and like yeah uh, man but so, i mean that's like one of the things that, that you know i know we're saying that that's Scream kind of, it's like the exclamation point at the end of the slasher genre. Like the slasher genre ran through right. the 80s, you know, kind of, you know, by the end of the 80s, you had like, I mean, Freddy was on like six, seven, eight, you know, uh, well, Friday the 13th was like. the late on, 80s was like Child's Play, Hellraiser. Like, I mean, when the new guys some, were coming. Yeah, yeah, the new like weird supernatural, not just dudes and masks, but, but I was shit such, that's just like fucking bizarre, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. Weird, mystical, like monster guys. But Scream was the one that kind of like as, you know, because it was able to look back at the genre and analyze it. Right. It also brought back something that had been missing from it since, like, you know, 1980, which was the sense of the whodunit. Yes. Yeah. You know, which For really, sure. like, because I just watched, uh, like, a, a bad Italian, well, it was Stage Fright, uh, yeah, bad stage Italian fright, slasher, yeah, yeah, yeah. and you're sitting there going, like, why does this suck so bad? It's like, oh, because we know who the killer is. He's this guy that they show who escapes from, from a mental a institution, for some reason. and you know who he is the whole way through it, and you're like, okay, so it's all about the murder yeah. scenes. And I think that's where slashers kind of were. You know, you knew Jason was going to show up. You knew Freddie was going to show right. up. And like, what? you know, so it's the kill scenes. Well, and then the MPAA is cutting all those down. So it's like, yeah, the movies just kind of re- Scream ran like out. revitalized the whole slasher. Like Scream, like revitalized yeah. the it but brought about a whole new Travis era. says otherwise, but it, it really I did revitalize it, it, it at the time. I mean, it. <laughs> they weren't like slashers I mean, like we knew them. Where no. slashers were based on no, the it's gory a new kill. They were the CW kid. I mean, it's every the evolution. fucking actor in those movies was was Sarah Michelle Gellar and Katie and, Holmes. And, uh, who was the can't hardly wait? Uh, Jennifer Love <laughs> yeah, Jennifer Love. Oh right, right. Yeah, yeah. And, it did. It uh, was uh, the Angel start of David it. David Boreanaz had Valentine, and, and you Emmy always Rogers. knew like no, like those girls were never gonna die. I don't know. I, that's why I never got into these because it's like these fucking people are television beauties. Like they, they're never. They're not in danger. Sure, all the other folks are all. Oh, there's the kid from Roseanne. There's the yeah, yeah but Scream, now, see, Scream now did it though. Scream, Scream, Freddie Prince. Uh. Scream <laughs> did it where where the first kill was uh, Drew Barrymore. Drew Barrymore. Drew Barrymore. Well, yeah, That's they the tried. Uh, he was mimicking uh, the whole psycho thing you do, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. right. Kill your what would have yeah. been your yeah, main Drew actress. Yeah, Drew Barrymore. You know, within the first ten minutes, minutes she was the, the biggest name in that movie. <laughs> which is on yeah, the fucking right? poster. You know, they just. I mean, which is a brilliant move. Kevin Williams. And just took all these because I mean, really, to me, Scream is Black Christmas. You know, it's the phone call and the the you know the walking around. It's Black Christmas. It really is. But with the cool Except trivia, everybody knows that. Yeah, everybody you know, knows cool, cool trivia that the fans trivia. are like. It's fucking his mother. It's not Jason. It's his mother. Yeah. You know, I know that. I know. That. I would have lived. And Scream is an awesome homage to like. I mean, in the movie, like to Halloween. I mean, which Scream? I think Kevin yeah. Williamson. They consider the the best 
yeah. slasher movie. Yes. I mean, the whole thing, like, you know, I mean, they do so much. That's why Jamie Lee Curtis wanted him to do the rewrite or whatever, come up with the, right, I think the initial storyline for Halloween H2O. But H2O. unfortunately, H2O. we didn't watch Scream. No, we did not watch <laughs> No, we didn't. We watched Scream, we watched we Scream, watched Scream 2. 2. All right, well, maybe um, we can take a moment before we talk about Scream 2 to talk about the man who made the Scream trilogy. Ah, uh, yes, we should. Uh, quadrology. Porno director Wes Anderson. <laughs> <laughs> I want to say, I think I don't know if his name was Wes Anderson. I think it was, dude. I swear to God, no, I think he's craving. Yeah, he was. No, it, when he directed porno, oh, I changed think, his name. Oh, to for it. sure, yeah, yeah. none of the all these all these horror directors usually start doing porno. That's all I like. Saying the ones that came specifically the ones that came out of the eighties, usually or no, 70s. the seventies. Yeah, yeah. 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 And usually most, the yeah. porn was from, a different thing then. I mean. But it was porn was like the easy thing to do. Yeah, like that's, well, it's the most can't, independent. Thing right, if to you can't do. find a way to make movies, you find any way to make movies. Dude, horror and porn, most independent fucking thing you'll ever make. You know, well, horror you know, comedies. I the guess. Weird thing about Wes Craven that kind of I don't know, not separates him from the pack, but he's got like an interesting backstory where like his parents were like fundamentalist uh, religious types that kept him like he didn't see a movie until he got to college. Well, that like there's no, a lot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I think he said one of the first movies he saw was uh, Ingmar Bergman's Virgin Spring, which he then basically remade that movie as Last House on the Left. Oh yeah, <clears throat> and made like which it, that is a terrifying movie. I know, but that's like it's, but it's all it's terrifying in the way of like pee yourself. You're like, what the fuck? Yeah, it's a gritty, grimy, nasty <laughs> kind of movie where John Landis like explained it once is like. It's like you go to a horror movie because you're like in the, you know, like Hitchcock was a master of suspense. You're putting yourself in his hands yep. and he's taking you through this stuff. So you trust Hitchcock to, you know, manipulate you. And Last House on the Left is like, these people are untrustworthy. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's like this movie and the Texas I gave them myself Man. and this is what they did to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, what the fuck? So Craven had like a huge hit there, and then uh, he repeated it again with like a Nightmare on Elm Street. That was another like huge, gigantic phenomenon, and again with Scream. Yeah, I mean, so we're gonna. I mean, Hills at least Have two Eyes of those are big. I mean, Hills Have Eyes was classic. Oh yeah, yeah. No, I'm not. I'm not saying that. I mean, there's a lot of stuff that he's done. I well, think that a lot you know. Of stuff. <laughs> I really do think. I mean, when it comes to Wes Craven, you got Last House on the Left, Hills Have Eyes, Nightmare on Elm Street, uh. Well, you're not a fan of Serpent and the Rainbow, but I just no, I'm not because it has a fucking voodoo fight at the yeah, end. That's and it's the like I'm sure it. if yeah. I read that it book, it, doll, it wasn't uh, like yeah. his uh. hands started glowing and we were whipping powers yeah. across. But like if you watch that, that movie again, Gandalf? it's like a, it's like a different movie. Like the movie is working up until that fucking like. Well, it's not CG. Maybe I don't like the Phil, equivalent of Phil wizards throwing right. stuff at each other. Voodoo, which was part of reshoots. They said, but yeah, but he. He like he fight. foresaw the future, kind of with uh, a Nightmare on Elm Street Part Seven. You new know, nightmare, the yeah. new nightmare. I was gonna say, if we're gonna talk West Scream and Scream, the precursor to that is New Nightmare. Yeah, it's like he did Scream already. It's got that new meta nightmare. sensibility that is uh, key to going through and making. Like, I don't know if he he kind of gets he practices a little bit in making New Nightmare, which kind of leads him to making Scream. Like, I don't know if he saw. That in that movie, like he saw, like I've made something kind of in this realm, mm -hmm. like if it prepared him to make Scream. Yeah, and, maybe. If, and if he hadn't made New Nightmare, I wonder what like Scream would have been. I think it would have been was different. Before Scream. Mm -hmm. Yep. Crazy. Yeah, like by a number, of, it was like 94. Huh. Yeah. Oh, fuck. So yeah, they had at least two years on Scream. Yeah. When did Scream come out? 96. 96. And then Scream 2 came out in 97. 97. Yep. Yeah, went into rusted out the gate. And it, went into, it went into production <laughs> quickly. Think, right, six it. months after uh, the release of Scream One. I know what, they were I know, I know what you did last summer. I think that's, that was the same year as Scream Two, if I remember. Might have been. I think it's maybe like see, like you know, like I, I if not the next, remember, like, Scream Two was released in December, but. Yeah, I, I definitely remember because, like, I had seen a horror movie in my entire life, but I would remember, you know, going with my girlfriend and, and seeing Scream 1 and Scream 2, and I know what you did last summer, and... Yeah, um, that's the that good block of movies. That's the brilliant part of it, though. It was all the casting and marketing. They made it seem like horror movie is now for everyone. Mm -hmm. Like, I had never watched horror movies, and then all of a sudden you're Scream, and I'm like, I want to see this movie. Maybe I want to see more horror movies. And I, I, well, they turned remember, all the lights exactly on for that. you. And I remember, fall, I remember falling in love with Nev Campbell. I'm mean, like, man, she's oh, so hot, yeah. man. She's so I like hot. how she can't keep her mouth shut. 
Or fucking t- just. <laughs> and then, you know, Always I mean, the it's... hand at the forehead. Yeah. That's, that was her scared look. That's why I kind of don't like Scream. I mean, okay, I like the character of. I mean, I understand the attractiveness of a character who, like, okay, I mean, right from the get go of Scream 1, she lost her mom. So yeah. she's just like, Puh, lost my mom, killed my mom. Puh. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and then you know, the in Screen Two, it's just like my boyfriend trying to kill me. Oh, this movie called It's nineties angst, though, man. It's nineties angst. That's what's all. That was, that's what the nineties are all about. I can't wait. Oh, to, I know. I saw. Reality I can't Bites wait and... for millennial horror movies. <laughs> I think you get them. Yeah, yeah getting we them. already got them. It's where they eat meat and shit. Like that. They're like, ew. She eating meat. <laughs> this is horrifying. Unfriended. Unfriended. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, be my friend <laughs> on social media ghost. <laughs> social media ghost. Yeah, the millennials are getting the ghost movies, the Blumhouse yeah. movies. <laughs> are the- but I do like what how uh, what Colin did uh, uh, say about yeah what Scream did bring back is that that who done it and that is what's yeah. fun about. I mean, no matter That's how the crappy fun. a slasher movie is, you can be like that fucking guy did it. Oh, he, oh, he's where did he go? He walked away. Oh, Dunkin' Donuts, my ass, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, scumbag boyfriend, her. look at him. He's got shifty eyes. Yeah. That's the fun in these movies. Now, I they they, they, it's, they haven't in, like the whole franchise. I think it's it is. Uh, I think it's done. Uh, it's more fun in this movie in Scream Two. What? Like I I, I love Scream One. Uh, and the who uh, you know the who well, done it all who's the killer? Me up but it's scream one. Well, kinda like you're like that boyfriend's creepy. Oh, it's the right. boyfriend killer. Duh, right. he was creepy from the get go. Yeah. All he did was talk about horror movies and shit. You yeah. know, but then he's there and gets attacked. I think it's or something. Yeah, he's, he's he there cuts there himself. Yeah. yeah. Well, they have yeah. sex and then like the killer comes in and quote unquote stabs him. Mm-hmm. So it and, does fool you. He's out. It turns you for a loop. Yes. Yeah. Then two kill. Oh shit. Uh, two killers. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Which I don't good. think they needed to repeat into. I yeah. thought it was so That's fucking why stupid. It's like such, two is such a fucking mediocre goddamn maybe, movie. Oof. Maybe that explains oof. why like physics doesn't like matter to the ghost face in this movie. Like, like there's two of them. So well, but, well. But, but in a way, it still doesn't fucking matter because they'll they'll be just standing there and be like, "There's the ghost ghost face in front of us." Somebody will go get it, and then they'll just appear behind that. And it's just like, well, what the fuck? He like, is, <laughs> this movie is very shifty in that regard. Like, it really like just the, allows Ghostface to come out from anywhere. Well, the Sarah Michelle Geller scene where she's talking on the phone, yeah. and he sneaks in behind him. Now, I think, like, well, it's creepy. Out the window. No, it's, I, it's creepy just to have, like, the killer sneaking through the background. But he does go into a corner. Where there is nowhere to go. There's nowhere to go. There's nowhere to go. <laughs> like Carl says, he's in the clock. Now, he's in the grandfather clock. Being oh, 20 wow. years on, like, I recognize these. I find these endearing in this movie at this point. <laughs> yeah. it, it, I mean, it, it really is to me. Oh, like, this, this movie, it's a warm blanket care. at this point, this movie. But, and I can see that. And there's also, like, this other stuff, too. Um, never stabbings don't line up. Shootings don't line up. Like, when he stabs Hallie, like... In reality, if you watch the editing of the movie, he stabs her once in the shoulder, and that's it. Where where it cuts back to Sydney, you hear like stab, 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 mm-hmm. stab, stab. You cut back to her, this one stab hole, yeah, and that was it. You can tell in the editing out. they're putting it well, in. Make it more to Same like, thing with the gunshots on Mickey know. later on. He gets shot once by Mrs. Loomis. Yeah. He's only got the one bullet hole, unless she missed the other times. But she shoots like five times. But in some ways, it feels like this movie, especially on this viewing, and again, I haven't seen it. In, I mean, I have seen it on video, mm. so I'm familiar with it. But this time around, there was a couple of scenes where I thought either they had run afoul of the ratings board, the death of uh, uh, Nev Campbell's friend, like that scene seemed like they cut something out because I'm like, well, that should be graphic, but we're not actually seeing it. But there was a scene in the police station where there was a lot of ADR being used, and I'm like, they're making this fucking shit up. Is it like they're changing something here? This wasn't the original intention. Like I can feel it because I know how movies are put together. There were a few few stabbings where they they full on stab them. There's no blood or nothing. Well, that's that's, yeah, but that's different than what I'm talking about. Where like I think like it could be that they shot certain versions and then went back and changed something and had to reshoot something well, and the, then that's why the 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 shoot you know the stab wounds of the yes. shots don't that's why well there's also like this movie was before like the whole entire script leaked on the internet 
oh, before. Too bad. Like right in the beginning of shooting or just before shooting began. So on this one, they were like rewriting as they went. Uh, because it got out there, they're just like, all right, we got to rewrite everything. I wonder because if they had to change the those scenes are different. Killers. The ending, yeah, the ending is different. Like they're the totally different killers. killers. It was the, uh, Derek, the boyfriend. Hallie was another killer. And Mrs. Loomis was still in it. And the way it ends in there is... Who's Hallie? The, the her friend, black friend. friend. Okay. The way it ends oh, in there... her black friend. Her black friend. Uh, the way it ends in there is um, uh, it's revealed that those two are the killers. Mrs. Loomis comes out, kind of like... It's still set up on the stage area at the end. She comes out, kills both of them. Uh, Cotton shows up. Kills... Cotton Mrs. shows up. Cotton shows up. <laughs> Cotton <I> Joe. <laughs> Cotton shows up. Uh, kills Mrs. Loomis, but then decides to turn on Sydney and Gail, as in like almost what he does at the end of this, like he fakes turning on her, but in the original script he actually did. He's like, mm. you guys ruined my life. So strong. And so he kills Gail, and then he uh, Kevin Williamson never actually finished the script. There's like four paragraphs at the end of this thing going, that's all I have, but they run off, they fight each other, they stab each other to death, and the movie ends with Cotton and, and Sydney uh, dead. At the end of the movie, and that's it. The original ending was. And the Weinstein said, What are you fucking crazy? Well, we gotta have like three no, or four movies. We don't, don't care, the kids it. will watch it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> now, that is their attitude for most things, yeah. I will say. Oh, I remember that they put out that movie Darkness with Anna Paquin, which oh. was a pickup from Spain, and it wasn't very good. They put it out on Christmas Day. And it opened and made money. And and I remember him saying later when he was putting out Horror Black movie Christmas, Christmas, he's like, I put out like this shitty fucking thing that we picked up on Christmas and like people went to see it. And, you know, like yeah. <laughs> that's what people do on Christmas. Like yeah, a horror movie care. on Christmas. Yeah, whatever. We can put it out and we'll still get people to go see that's it. That's the thing. <clears throat> but it leaked and they had to reshoot a, a bunch. So, I mean, in the editing, I'm sure that's why there's a, a, quite a few ADR scenes. The editing is like maybe feels like it was kind of veering a different direction in certain scenes and they had to like cut together what they could to kind of put it the way they wanted to go. I think a lot of this movie was made in editing. It feels like it. Not as much as the third one. The third one really does, but well, dude, the it, fir- I mean, the first fucking what? 20 minutes of this movie is just two characters that mean nothing to anything, right? I mean, no, well, it's probably like 10, but it feels like 20. Yeah, the Omar I, I don't know, Jada, is that? Yeah. It feels like 20 to me. It felt probably, like... Yeah, it's probably like 10. Really oh, no, it's, it's 12, technically. It's 12? It's, it's 12 because it the, it's the same in, in the first one and the second one. It's a 12-minute opening scene. Uh, so it's 12 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but the scene that followed that, uh, after the credits, well, it was a little... It was the... Uh, they were outside of the school... Sydney had come out, and then you were pretty much getting introduced to every single major character in this movie. And, like, it wasn't one shot, but it was all, like, we went from this corner of the, you know, whatever you call it, the common square, right. <clears throat> to this corner, to over here, we meet this guy. And I'm like, man, right. they're picking up characters you could as you actually go. do that scene as, like, a scene from a play. Like, you can do that on stage, I think. You know, Dude, like, introduce fu- these people. She punches her out. She meets this person. She has to go over here. And it, like, sets up, like, do you remember when we were in doesn't Woodsboro, it, do, do we? You know, and all that horrible stuff happened to us. Because then, doesn't it follow <clears throat> Scream 1, like, fucking exactly? Because, okay, instead of Drew Barrymore getting killed at the beginning, it, it's uh, Jada Pinkett Smith uh, complaining about black people, not in movies. Uh, for 20 minutes. <laughs> you say that ironically is she... Uh, that was, this is 2016, the year of the Oscars that she protested. The year of the Nobel. Well, I was, just, I was just surprised. I was just like, oh, that's, that's funny. She did the same thing. Right? Yeah, but, wow. uh, but uh, you know, and, and I thought it was really funny. I swear to God, like, she says that, and the rest of the movie is like, wait, white guy, white guy, black person. White guy, white guy, black person. You know, it's just like, well, they stuck to their word. You know, they... They had the characters say it, and they fucking made sure to... But that's the thing about this movie, Not that it bugs me. I was just really like, what the fuck? That's really weird. The thing about this movie, though, in that, is that they kind of... They put the whole sequel talk without the entire movie. They kind of put everything... Well, they put everything up front. They're like, sequels suck. Like, they're going after... Kind of, I mean, they're blaming sequels. They're blaming sequels for not being as good as the originals. They're saying they're saying the things that sequels do and everything, and then they're they're kind of you know owning up to their own actions. Well, but that's just because they're lowering your standards up front. They're like, oh, even they even they think it's going to. Well, they're setting a bar that they're going to beat. They're going to be the sequel that's better than. See, I don't even think that the only entertain. I think one of the reasons Scream uh, matters at all is because. 
we replaced all these two dimensional nothing characters with just geeky movie talk. And I think that's all they're doing. They're just repeating, like, how do we fill this script? I know. Uh, uh, sequels. Uh, well, they're, you know, hey, the black people never uh, survive. Uh, uh, they're just movie tropes to get that people are just spewing out just to fill time. Because, hey, geeky guys like to hear. Yeah, they're doing like, it on purpose. I understand that. Well, you know, this I is, it's also living in the shadow of Pulp Fiction, right? Which had already come out. And, like, now you could have. Because even this time, you know, listening to how some of these characters talk, they don't talk like real life people. I mean, they talk in very verbose. There's uh, Dewey has like a, you know, big bug eyed yelling at Gale where he's explaining all this stuff. Well, and you're dude, like, he That's like a fucking paragraph time of like- shit of exposition or character detail that, you know, you wouldn't find somebody, I don't think, writing that way today. It's like it's no. an echo of Tarantino where we give people like, you know, these paragraphs to say in this movie, you know, like you're able to actually go ahead and have people talk about movies in these kind of, you know, the the minutia of like geekdom or yeah. whatever, you know, like, yeah. Well, because somehow Sydney wasn't the main focus in this movie. I think that's you a know? problem that's the with pro- it. Yeah. Yeah. It's like. They had nothing for her for so, like ah we did in that first movie. Yeah, it's gonna be like the Gale least, Winters and yeah. Dewey investigating because they, they, were, they were surprised. Surprise, yeah, but because uh, the casting of of uh, Courtney Cox and David Arquette in the first one and the chemistry between them, I think, was a surprise. Yeah, when they you know finally had the movie out, it's like. Oh, these people are actually like in some ways. Well, they got married, right? Yeah. I mean, they yeah. got married. <laughs> but it's like then you have to bring them three. back for yeah. the second movie and like give them something to do. And they're like the cute couple. And they actually have more going on between them than what Sydney does. Yeah. yeah. Which I don't. Well, I don't mind that. Well, like, well, I, but you get. I. Th- I like the time we spend with all the other characters. I mean, I don't think you get. Bo- you're not focused on a single character. I don't think you get bored with just being with that character. I think it gives you a little bit of everything across the board. I mean, I like these characters. I think that's a pl- that, but the, see, that's the thing. It's either the casting from the first movie, right? Because actually, yeah, I don't know if I like any of the new characters, right? But I like the people that they. I like right. uh, uh, Randy, Randy, Sydney. And- uh, Gail Tim Oliphant was the new fucking uh, Matthew uh, yeah, Lillard you know who had to go crazy which works works jazz. in favor of the movies and that you have this cast of people that you do like mm-hmm. and you you can worry about what's going to happen to yeah, them especially yeah, yeah. after a specific character <laughs> dies <laughs> even though nothing ever happened they get shot stabbed but they're like no, they, oh, kill, well, well, they, but they the killed my was, favorite character they yeah. kill they oh. kill Randy yeah, which to me fun. like that's a when you first seen the movie 20 years ago that was a bummer like oh, no, yeah, not I remember yeah because yeah, that's like, Jesus, like, they like, fucking what? killed Randy. But I thought he'd ain't make he it in the home. third one? No, he sent no. like. Well, he is, but what? he is. He oh, sends him like but a VHS that, tape. Oh, like, yes. yeah, yeah, if right. I'm dead, it's oh, because yes. the rules of the three one four. crappy the movie at a time. One yeah. Yeah. but the killing of Randy gives some <laughs> weight to how you feel about the rest of the characters. Yeah, like yeah. Yeah. they kill. Yeah, well, not for you two, but for me, it did. <laughs> oh, uh, but it's it's sh- like it shows no, you, it can kill, you can kill off anyone at any time. Yeah. Like your favorite character in the movie, we just killed him. Yeah, maybe somebody else is up for grabs too like that gives something to it yeah that works in favor i think of this casting it goes too far in the later sequels where they would not touch yeah these characters well, later on. Just, like, no we can't kill well, they only the had three, three left well because yeah. then the, the killer just kills people really not related to anything that's the problem with this movie it's like they don't she like the killer doesn't taunt sydney and the killer doesn't kill people that sydney like even cares about oh Wait, oh see no. see the girl no. like staying at the I fucking they, they, uh, sorority house oh uh, the the two black people going in the movie theater uh, uh <laughs> well okay rain He's the one per. Like, I mean, uh, no, it, well, makes well, it, it makes sense. It did make sense. It did make sense. It did make sense. Oh, no, Tom. That's so, right. The so, name. Cece. <laughs> her last name was Cooper. Oh, whoa. Yeah. Maureen Kate, was the well, black girl. Casey, I'm Casey, just saying Maureen it doesn't work, but it doesn't work for a fucking movie. You know, that's why we don't care. I don't know. It's just. I don't give a shit. Right, they didn't make a big deal out of the fact because Cece's actual name was Cooper, right? It was Buffy. She's a slayer. How right. dare they fucking She's not demasculize to Cooper <laughs> in any way? It's just her last name, so it has to be Cooper. And yeah, like, just, but yeah. you know what I'm saying? Oh, come on, back me up here. Well, I'm backing you. Yeah, yeah, I guess I'm backing you. <laughs> well, I mean, it, but that's hard to, you know. I mean, I see what you're saying, but at the same time, it's like, I mean, I like a lot of Friday the Thirteenth and Halloween sequels and all that, and like those, those people are like. 
you know, I mean, victims in movie. It's like you yeah. have to set them up but, and kill them but off. But every movie you set, before but, you narrow in on the the. Right. the but that's main the problem characters. with this movie. This movie sets up. Okay, Sydney's in college now. She has a new boyfriend, Gener- uh, Jerry, 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 Jennifer General O'Connell. O'Connell. <laughs> Je- Je- Jerry O'Connell. Uh, uh, Tim Tim All Fantastic. All uh, Fantastic. Uh, the, Buffy. The, the well, but well, she wasn't really set up as a friend. The, oh, the, the 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 black roommate girl. What's her name? Hallie. 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 And none of those people are the people that die. That's why I'm saying. Hallie like, dies. Hallie dies. Okay, Jamie, but that's Randy like dies. Like later in the movie, right? Right. So where it kind of right where it kind of ramps well, up. Okay, right? like like Good I point. said. Okay, in Scream One, they set up a group of friends, then they get picked off one by one. That way, you you just know even even. But there's no more put into setting up a group of friends in the first one than there is in the second one. You just have to know a few more characters more intimately. Well, like, no. Well, the problem is, is that this movie it doesn't want you to spend time with her new boyfriend because they still want to play on her sure. fear that the new boyfriend could be, you know, you have to doing the new everybody. thing. Sure. So it doesn't give you any time with him. Uh, it doesn't give you any time with. Would you maybe, want to? Yeah. Well, I'm just saying. That's why I'm saying I don't feel. All, that's why I think this movie, to me, uh, this. That's why I don't like this movie because well, a lot of this movie is Courtney Cox and and fucking, more senses punctuated. Uh, a guy uh, named please. a guy named Duffy or whatever his name is. Like his Dewey? Name? Dewey. Dewey. Yeah, yeah. A guy named Dewey. <laughs> a guy named Dewey just wandering around like. I, he, Speaking yeah. of Dewey wandering around, can we just mention the the uh, Broken Arrow theme for Dewey in this movie? Oh yeah, he's I like, love. He walks into a room and they're playing like the, he's like an old gunslinger. It or is, but it, I love that. <laughs> introduction of him where he's just kind of wandering around turns burn, around burn, 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 burn. Yeah. I love it wow well, we love might it. as well wait, you're speaking of music we might as well talk about music then oh yeah the great oh, the soundtrack <laughs> a 90s soundtrack, soundtrack punctuated with the greatest oh, 90s songs you know, that I, were ever created when I watch sarcasm I, <laughs> dripping off of that statement well I like I love songs some 90s that, music. that that can like in- just completely encapsulate the feeling of the movie you're going through at the same time as hey, you know what this that movie was does? the that Absolute was the encapsulation mediocrity. of the movie we were going through. I think that's <laughs> but, but I mean, wasn't, but that wasn't even in the movie though, right? No, that was like because yeah, you go there's like a party scene and it's something like ma 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 ma. It's just like they took a bunch of this movie. This movie came out in 1997. They took a bunch of awesome 90 bands and then played the worst songs. By those ninety like bands, college party, yes, college party, yes. No, but you guys went to some depressing yeah. ass party. <laughs> I, know. I think may have been, but that's like in the zeitgeist that that, that time. Totally that was. is the kind of music that I just remember hearing. Like, yes. like when you but hear you it now, you're like, oh Jesus! <laughs> no, I mean, I was alive in the nineties. I was in public <laughs> no. places where this stuff was playing. I went outside the in the nineties. Yeah. I still. I this wasn't what I, 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 I was listening to. In the 90s, I but. never known anybody that listened to any fucking music in this movie. Like, I no. listened to Everclear. I did. Hell yeah, well, she listened to I Everclear. Love what, collective, collective Soul. soul and, collective uh, Soul. Uh, I love it. Matthews I love Band. Band. And, well, less okay, than Jay, like, less than Jay. but I've never heard those songs. A horror movie soundtrack. A horror movie. But this is also this is the horror movie that stars the. Kids off the CW. It's not that's a true. horror movie. I'm gonna no, go ahead no, and say it's not a horror. Movie. Like I know that is what they're doing because yeah. it's the, the it was the prototypical the version of that. Like it was the first the horror yes. series to do that. This yeah. is the revelation of the horror movie in the nineties. Yeah, this it was a new thing. Turn yeah. all the lights on. Wait, too scary. Get rid of all the blood, all of it. Yeah. <laughs> Even though we have a character say the sequel is always gorier. Hey, well, you know what? This fucking. Time. You know what this movie has? Not this time. This movie has the nineties. Oh stage. yeah, it's a lot of yeah. sound effects. Go. Wait, hold on. Sean's got a point here about the. Or you did? What the? Fu- uh, yeah, I do. What the fuck was I saying? Uh, oh jeez. Uh, no, no, no. It was. It was the prototypical. Um, the the hot young actors, um, from the TV shows, bring them in to the movie. Um, it was the prototypical version of that. You see that a lot nowadays. But again, back in the '90s, like oh. these were the first. This was, I would say, the first series to do that. Like you yeah. always find, even going back forever, you find like the, the hot people coming up, and you put them in your movie. This more so because you're populating so many of them from 
from the most popular, you know, things on TV and putting them in your movie. Like this was the first series to do that. Back then it wasn't looked upon as it is today as something like, oh, obviously they grabbed the girl from the CW show and they brought her in and they put her in this. Ooh, it's one of those movies. It wasn't like that back then. Like this was the first one to do it. Like, yeah, actually, I remember I, thinking that when it yeah, came out. I because thought it was. Not, not, but not, <laughs> but not, um, not in a negative way. I don't think. Like we put I mean, a. Ne- we put I was a aware that it was like, uh, you know, what do you call it? Like a, a crass commercialism. You know, it's like because the CW uh, was casting? able to tap into like a younger demographic. Yeah, I mean, yeah the dude, these are horror but movies for young but girls. But again, they literally have a scene now. I know Sarah Michelle Gellar is on a phone talking to her friend about what happened on Party of Five. Yeah. It's true. That is true. It's but I meta, do want to man. clarify, Nev Campbell's from Party of Five, which aired on Fox, not the CW. Well, the CW well, we're is, is our it's standard. Generic, it's our, it's our, generic it's about, our yeah, generalism. Yeah, yeah, there's not as many shirtless guys in, in Scream as there is on the CW. But, but, the, but it was genius, They tried, though. damn it. It was genius, because I was like, Nev Campbell from Party of Five, it I want to see this movie. That's what I'm saying, horror yeah. movies for yes. young girls. And well, but it worked. Yeah, it, it worked, worked. but it I brought don't care, in. that's not my, I like horror yeah. movies. But I went to see girl. Scream, and I loved it. And, you know, I mean, like, I knew who the people were or yeah. what the yeah. shows they were in, and I, you know, actually... I we're not I'd talking about it. Scream. We're talking about Scream 2. <clears throat> but, but I think <laughs> it, it yeah, works that's the right. same way. Actually, this movie, I think, does have, of the two, say, if we're just looking at the first and the second one, yeah. I think this movie has two really good suspense sequences. There's the one in the car yeah. and the one in the audio booth. Thank uh, you. Like, yes. when I saw those, I'm like... This is like a really cool no, idea no, that yes. you know you got somebody being killed on the other side of uh, painted glass and they can't hear yes. soundproof glass. That whole scene is one of the best ones in this movie, no. and the one in the car. Yeah, no, and yes, both, Tom, I'm going to make a they're, case. They're both they're both terrible. No. <laughs> they're both terrible. No. No. The, the, the the glass is bullshit because Dewey's knocking on the glass. You can't hear nothing. The killer knocks on the glass, and you can obviously hear it. Dude, he was using his bullshit. He was using his limp, uh, his that's limp <laughs> knuckle. Bullshit. That is an editing like, faux pas. The idea of the scene is awesome. Yep. No, I yes. say, and I think the execution. We're looking at like a heightened reality and, and the sound and effects. The car scene yeah. is drawing, also bullshit you know. because she's climbing over him. She has a perfect opportunity to take off the mask. She has a perfect opportunity to grab the knife and finish the killer off. But that's the thing—you don't know what she's gonna do. Well, you're she's thinking, scared shitless after a car accident. You're thinking like, that's what she should do, right? Or is she gonna try to run? Well, there because had to logically, like a sane person might just try the, to run. And they even say that, like we're yeah. sane people, let's get the fuck out of here. Yeah. Like, and they do make lip service to trying to take the the mask off. Right, then, you know, whatever. But yeah. I mean, the way that those scenes are executed are like I think actually that scene is probably better. I'm trying to think of like a suspense moment in the first one that stands out. As much as the, you know, have being trapped in the backseat of a cop right. car with the doors locked and you can't get out on one side and you have to crawl over the dude who's asleep and, you know, knocked out right. on the front yeah. side. I was like, yeah. I remember watching up. that. And I was like, Jesus Christ, I'm kind of like, you know, starting to tense up here because, like, nervous. at some point yeah. the dude's going to. And you, know, you always think moment. like, oh, now the friend's turn. She's going to. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and they don't do like, that. Oh, yeah. yeah. And they don't do it. Yeah. I know. It's now, pretty smart. It is pretty smart. And there's and a car scene in the first one. Yeah, with the with, trunk and all right, that. Yeah, yeah, I, where the, the, the things I are popping the black up and I'm like, come on, this is bullshit. I know, but like, but see, you know, I've seen this like dozens of times. Well, I don't know, at least a dozen times. I'm sitting there listening to Tom going like, ah, oh, you're being stupid. This is retarded. This whole thing is stupid, blah, 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 blah. Very agitated. <laughs> to which I conclude that Tom was agitated and, you know, like it was getting to him. And so his relief valve was to shout at the screen and tell people how stupid Agreed. the people were. Yeah. Look at him smile. I'm like, that scene true. works. <laughs> He works. Knows it's true. <laughs> <laughs> but works. I do have to say, what deflates the scene is I have to go back. She goes back. The killer's gone. And then the killer jumps out from behind a fucking dumpster. <laughs> Again, the, the black physics are a little like, iffy. Fucking yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah. This magic, the fucking dragon <laughs> scream killer. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. That, that, that is the best I phrase of the it, scream man. killer. Like, this magic. Thing, Again, it's got a is, fucking, like, he's a little magic. It's got one of those black holes from Roger Rabbit. <laughs> just fucking. <laughs> There are a few conveniences like Bullshit, yeah. he, they end up going for the climax of the movie. They end up going back to the theater. Now the killer just goes back to the theater and starts turning on all the sound equipment for the uh, for the uh, stage play that she's doing. By the way, 
one of my favorite scenes in the movie earlier on when they're just before um, Sydney uh, is uh, she's a theater major or she's an actress. Uh, that's what oh, she's going yes, to college for. And she has this conversation with her, you know, her director, about David Warner, in David Warner scene. Yes. Yeah. About that, which they I mean, they talk um, again. They're talking about uh, they're talking about Agamemnon and Cassandra, but they're talking about Sydney like they're pinpointing like she knew. She knew she was cursed. She saw it before anyone else saw it coming. I mean, it's Sydney's character. Mm-hmm. Like, she believes it's starting again. She believes it's coming for her. Like, they're, that's why, I mean, that's obviously why they picked that play for yeah. her to be a part yeah, of. Yeah, I know. But that ties in really well. It ties in that, really well. The but theater is the battleground of the soul, you know, or whatever. Right, yeah. And, uh, yeah, an artist, like, it battles for their soul doing that. And the when they actually do the scene, like, that's that's one of them, uh, composed by Danny Elfman, by the way. Yes. That the was his, his, yeah. Composed by yes. Danny Elfman. His scene yeah. specifically. Um, but that's one of my favorite scenes in this. I just, I like... Uh, I like the theatricality of it. There's a bit more theatricality throughout this whole movie that I like, but the theatricality of that scene, um, I like that she's going through it, and then whether... There's arguments of whether it's she's just seeing things or if somebody is actually right, on set. Yeah. But I like that it's all the characters dressed kind of, you know, they're in cloaks and masks and they've oh, got I'll knives be, and everything. Oh, my God. Okay. Thank okay. Like you for bringing that up. I'm gonna, but I'm I like, that's one of my like, favorite scenes. Boom. I like her being chased around and him <laughs> weaving in and out of all the other characters. I think that's, that's Her coming well face to face with them and then running off away. That's one of my favorite scenes. See, I want to call. I agree with you on that. What I, I'm going to say, I think that's a stupid scene because <laughs> it's the second time in the movie they had to have an excuse for a lot of people to hold knives and go around <laughs> slashing. <laughs> I mean, it's just like fucking shit. Bam! And all, I agree with you about that. <laughs> <laughs> also, the second musical number within like 10 minutes of the movie. <laughs> but I will say, like, I give credit to this movie because what other horror movies are going to step, like, and allow you to do that in in a horror movie. Like, they branch off and they do, you know, uh, yeah. a scene from a play in this. Like, I, I appreciate that they allow, the, the story allows it to go and do that. And to turn it into something that is, to me, scary. Well, that and makes me again, not one of my fear for parts. Sydney. In, in Scream 1, I'm like, dude, someone wants to kill Sydney. In this, I'm like, eh. Some yeah, dudes man. just kind of cop it. I kind of miss like, the I phone just calls. Yeah, I know. No, like I said, Sydney's not a victim in this at all. No old. one's. The phone calls are old. Dude, in the, fr- so much. In the first one, man, they had some else good, in this, deep just not the victims. Well, hey, Sydney. But here's the thing. Here's they the, get one of the best phone calls with Randy. But here's but, the thing. Tying what, what you said earlier about um, them set, like setting up the scene, setting up the, the stories. Like, right. The whole movie, to me, is setting the stage. I think that's the theme of the entire movie. It because, very much so is, because where do they the, end? At the very end, it's ending on the stage. Like, the whole movie is specifically set up, setting up the stage. That's the theme of the movie. Then that's very the, and, and that's the theatrics that I like about this there, movie. Yeah. When I, very, yes. <laughs> but that's what and I what mean. forces the her to the fucking amphitheater is just music play. I better go there, even though a killer is <laughs> I better go right the to the... The stage well, beckons her. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like you said, I must act. Jesus, yeah, that's but, fucking movie. I mean, they have shut down the campus, it's although I've never, I'll ridiculous. never believe that a college town can be shut down as easily as that. That college campus was gorgeous. But it was, very much so. But they do, they have shut down the campus. And so, I mean, when she's running through, she hears the music and she thinks people where is this, college yeah. campus this is where I at? need to go that's why she goes to the music you because she thinks, you go. Yeah, she thinks there is safety a stretch. I, I'll, <laughs> I'll give you that's a good like thinking your way out of <laughs> that <laughs> scene like take it. why does Cindy go there Kevin shut up <laughs> <laughs> he's just smacking around his writer's assistant it's Scream too. do you want a fucking sequel or not she I runs to scream. the theater <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Oh my Just God. an angry, coked out Kevin Williams. Going, <laughs> no, it's theater. <laughs> Jamie go. Fucking my Curtis arm. wants me to write the new Halloween. <laughs> I don't need this shit. <laughs> and like, and like, and like, and it's it's like, and in the end when uh, I just the end like scene fight battle. When she's actually turned on all the lights, she actually grabs the thunderclap. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And starts like, I know, I was sitting there. Like, that's going to make a huge like, but, Oh, I got to make some thunder. She was trying to fuck with her, but. Dude, yeah, that was like a. I'm sorry. That was like a Looney Tune concussion. I know. Well, I thought it was like, turn... like she was losing her mind. Like, I at mean, that point, she might be at that point. Th- there was nothing in the movie to really bear that out. Sure. But it was like, this is the moment where Sydney is fucking losing it and going over to, like, you know. No, Sydney's losing it? 
Yeah, but she was the one who was shaking the. Well, yeah, because she's trying to. Yeah, disorient the. Yeah, yeah. disorient the. Yeah. Fucking retard. Like, whoa, whoa. Yeah. Like, who would just. I don't know. A rational person would get the fuck out the door. Yeah, like, right? like it's real lightning or something. You yeah. know, it's like, what the fuck? Who would fall for this? Elmer Fudd? Like. <laughs> they, uh, and it seems so like, cartoony to me. They're and trying like, to confine the, it in the, the way they the shoot fu- it. The rocks, because <laughs> they keep you right on. Like they make it think. By the way, they shoot it that there's nowhere to go. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. No, the, the way oh, they shoot oh, it, like oh, there's no. She's confined to the stage. <laughs> the doors are locked. Fuck there is not a whole open area behind her oh, that like, doesn't exist. Yeah. Yeah. Just run around it. Everywhere. No, jump. Yeah, jump over. No, she tries to go and get off. She sees the platform's gone. Gail down there. Um. <laughs> she gets yeah. she, the the wall of styrofoam rocks oh, falls on her, God. and it makes just it seem whole, like she got buried by rocks. We well, didn't even really talk about who. Well, we she yeah is. we we get yes, to the end. I we, was just gonna say that. Can we talk about Aunt Jackie? Fucking well, Aunt Jackie. Well, we get to the end. Cindy's drawn. I spit to, in the theater. Cindy's drawn <laughs> to the stage where she finds Derek strung up on the uh, fate. Uh, on the Star platform, yeah, yeah, that comes down from him. Derek's up there, and the killer reveals himself from behind them, and it's We're Mickey. Timothy Oliphant! Ha-ha! I'm you acting. Couldn't tell, because I'm acting exactly like Matthew Lillard, you know? I like the way this And I'm time, the only other guy in the movie that cared so much about movies. Yeah. It's like the fucking yeah, yeah. first movie. Well, I was watching it, I'm like, okay, so knowing that he's the killer, like, what? how are they misdirecting it? Because usually, the thing that you do in a horror movie to misdirect your killer is he's you have accusing. some scene where it seems like they are about to be attacked, or yeah. somehow, you know, but it actually wasn't the killer. It was like somebody coming home and their fucking cat jumped or whatever, and you're like, oh, but you're your memory, you remember, some, you know, like a suspense moment right. where they were in jeopardy. They don't do this. He suggests, yes, you know, like, like at the beginning, that's what he's doing to throw the scent off. Is like it's kind of convenient that he did something, something. Well, it's uh, like why would anybody go back in that house anyway? Like yeah, he's planning yeah. ideas in everybody yeah. else's head. Is like why would they do Wait, that? Yeah. Have you guys looked at Randy? Like right. yeah, he's yeah. a little off. And the he second thing the first he time. does is with Randy, or when Randy's giving his little spiel to Dewey, it's like, well, it could be this person, it could be Mickey. Right. But if it's Mickey, then it could be me, and then it could be you. They're like, okay, let's. Just and so move it's on. eliminated. Yeah. Like now. Psh- who was the character in the classroom scene that actually cited the whole, like, the Pamela Voorhees? I mean, because, I mean, this movie gives away the ending. Uh, no, that was Randy when, he's, Randy when he's talking to Dewey. Mrs. Voorhees was a terrific serial killer. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, you know, so the movie gives it away right it's there. It's very that, smart that way. I mean, that's kind of clever about how the movie, like, lays everything it's well, think, going to do. It's it commenting does. on it while it's doing it. It does. That's what's great about it. it lays it out for you, but then, it, you know, it's entertaining in the ways it gets to what it is telling right. you it's going Isn't to do. Isn't Timothy Oliphant's character the only one that's defending that the sequel is the better movie? Yes. No, yeah, he is. Yeah, like, constantly yes. offering up examples. Yeah, T2, yes, he aliens. He wants his version to be better. Yes. Yeah. Which, I don't know, I don't buy that character. I don't. I don't buy his motive. I mean, whatever. I don't know. It's just the idea that you can yeah, have... I don't buy it as well as I buy the guys in the first movie. Yeah, like, like, it does feel like we've been down this road I mean, at before. least, like, Billy Loomis has the, your horma. I love how this whole thing's about Cindy's horma. I love it. Like, that's the legacy of, like, your mom was a whore. It's the legacy throughout. And yeah, like, generations and generations of people are going to die because your mom was a whore. <laughs> It really is. Like, yeah, that, is, that is the through line throughout the whole thing. Now, Mickey may seem like the obvious one and the one like, ah, oh, we've seen this before. But he gets dispatched pretty quickly um, right after they reveal of that it's Billy Loomis' yeah. mom. That's what I'm saying. It was, it was cheap, right? They needed a Matthew Lillard-type character to throw in there. I think it helps them in the physics of if you're going to kill people and call people, like, to have two people. Again, they well, went through it in the third one, but... I mean, that's one, true, but, but I can only buy the fact that, okay, like I said, Billy Loomis, he had his revenge factor of your mom broke up my parents and shit like that. You know, I'm going to kill, you know, your mom right. and, and you. Uh, and it just so happens his friend is fucking crazy and obsessed with horror movies. To find that twice, I'm a little like, what the fuck? How did Billy Loomis, like... I mean, each one takes the form know. of kind of the commenting on the... The commenting on the movie industry at the time, like that's uh, these, the characters are stand-ins for that. Like we want to say something about this, we're going to give the crazy versions of it and put them in these characters. 
Uh, I mean, how you feel about well, that? That's also why I think as these movies go on, I think like the, I mean, the second one's like kind of teetering on the edge, but the third one, it feels like wow. I mean, there's who, only so who, many. The third ways. one, yeah, what was who it? Who was the killers in the third dog? It was the third one. Yeah, who's the third one? Is uh, it was one guy, silliness. and he's yeah, he's like a. It's Roman. Film. It's Roman Sydney's Bridger, half who brother? Is it's Sydney's half yeah. brother, which Kevin Williamson, he's loving Halloween so much, gave them the idea of it's her brother. Yeah. Like, that's where the whole back to Halloween connection kind of goes. But it's Roman Richard, the guy who's the movie director. Her brother through who? Through Sydney's mom, Sydney's mom and had, Lance Henriksen. To, yeah, she came out her to Hollywood and had an affair they with They fucked Lance her three Henderson. ways from Sunday, right here in this room. That time when her mom went missing, she went to Hollywood and tried to become an actress or something. Yeah, it's like really stretching. Oh, the the third and fourth movies. movies. <laughs> Just the yeah. fact that Nev Campbell can't act like a... A woman becoming an actress. That's what, like, we're like, I'm like, what the fuck? I don't buy that she's a woman wanting to act. But, the, well, yeah. I know, but right? it kind of runs weird? in the family, How does that happen? as it were. Yeah, but, but the third and fourth one, they the conveniences stretch way too far. Like, oh, because it's What's information four? you don't learn until those movies Between happen. Four? Screen, yeah, who was the killers in four? The okay. mysterious cousin who shows up out of nowhere <laughs> just so she can be the killer because it's got to be family member. It's yeah. the dumbest idea. Well, yes, they have, yeah, did they have a good two, enough though? idea for any the, sequel? There were Screen two. Yes. Yeah. The other one was the, Rory Culkin. Did they have the, the crazy movie? Movie? The crazy movie obsessed friend. I love so the movies. Oh, Jesus that was Christ. the specifically that horror me. movies, which right. is weird that it kind of makes that like the people who are big fans of horror movies Our being uh, uh, like Matthew Lillard. What was his fucking name? Matthew Lillard. Stu. 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 Uh, Stu. Uh, Stu. 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 Yeah, the killer is <laughs> always a scream, like a baby. <laughs> Except for me. Oh, Stu. <laughs> I don't know. He was awesome. I always had a thing for you, Sid. That's what Except I'm saying. For He's Randy. Just... Randy wasn't a killer. No. He was a good guy throughout the whole thing. He wasn't obsessed with horror movies. He was just obsessed with movies. Oh. But Stu was obsessed with horror yeah, movies, I think, right? True. Dude or here, I guess. We don't know. He was just a movie. What? Well, well, okay. yeah, yeah, I was whatever. trying to run with the Oh, theory, he was, who maybe... the trial. Oh, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Fucking bullshit. He wanted to be a reality TV star. I, pff, they pulled motive. they pulled it off better in that, in that than they did for four, as far as wanting to be a reality TV star. Four is fucking well, yeah. garbage. It had the cheerleader from worse, Heroes. To tell you the truth. No. That maybe just by oh, three. Have any of you seen Scream, the TV series? No. no. Oh, it's actually yeah. not Fool me horrible. once, sir. <laughs> I know, I, Fool me for three I sequels. Because I knew there was this Scream Queens, and for a while I was yeah. getting them oh, confused yeah, yeah. as to which one is which, but there's an actual... Scream what? TV series. So who yeah, did it? it who MTV. done it? Wasn't it? A girl. I can't MTV. tell you that because I can't remember. But it was, uh, yeah, it was, on it was MTV, Henry Winkler. Yeah. And there's <laughs> another season next. Oh no, I do remember who did it. <laughs> oh shit. Yeah, yeah but it's like principal? it's kind of the uh the janitor. I mean it's like it's taking Scream and slowing it down to uh, 10, 10 episodes. Like yeah. there was like from Dust Till Dawn. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, is it's it not still a remake. Sydney and all that shit? No, no. Nope, it's a nope. completely new thing. The, the events of these the costume movies is different. hasn't happened. Oh, that's stupid. Yeah. And so there's a, a whole new costume? mythology. Because they couldn't uh, license the. Uh, what? The $5 <laughs> one? Yeah. Even though it was executive produced by Wes Craven. That doesn't make any sense. That's bullshit. Why don't even do it then? I don't know how much. any of them. No. I don't know how much uh, creative input oh, Wes Craven had in he it. He just but signed off on it, probably. Probably. I mean, it. Uh, still, that's weird, though. How you would think that the title of something would go with the character design of something, right? Like, unless they just wanted to. No, I think they redesign it because it's not. I think like, they wanted it's to a redesign half it. Hockey mask it's a blowjob face. Half screen, you know, the screen it's, mask. It's white. It's got a somewhat open mouth. It's like. Half hockey mask. Yeah, it's more like a. It's this weird. one Sounds is ridiculous. very elong, elongated in the in the screen movies. Yeah, this one's it's very more short. like a. It's more the shape of Jason's hockey mask. Weird. Why even weird. bother? I watch it. Because hey, if, like, you, if uh, you slap uh, the screen name on it, people will come. Well, well, it wasn't. Yeah, it wasn't I'm just saying. Having seen it, it's not. Terrible. If you're into that kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, but you like Bloodless anything that says, though. it's like, if it has the word horror in front of it, you'll watch it. That's not entirely true. Mm-hmm. Well, no, you gotta be dis- you gotta be discriminating at some point and say like that just looks. Your really points bad. are kind of far. Well, well, maybe <laughs> it's just taste. But anyway, whatever. So <laughs> whatever. So Shut up. Uh, that probably wraps up our scream yeah, discussion. I'd say so, right. We're gonna yeah, have a bunch of uh, final thoughts. So, listener, we hope that you stay through. Igor's mailbag to hear that. But first, we're going to get to your comments. And if you want to comment 
on any of the shows that we've done, or this one in particular. If you agree, disagree, want to throw something in the mix, you can write to us on Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. You can follow us on Twitter at Sat Freak Show, and uh, you can email us. Anybody use that anymore? Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. Igor, sir, where art thou? Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Okay, and thank you, Igor. Looking slick, Igor. All right, somebody remind me to change this battery in a shot collar. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you almost got loose. Uh, first up, we hear from uh, Dom Cree, who writes Dom. in. Um, about our Legend of Hell House episode, he says, great show. Hashtag spectral intercourse. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was Travis. Uh, Chris was Huddleston Adam. writes in about uh, Scream 2. He says he loved the first one and liked the second one a lot, but he hated the third uh, upon initial release. Wait for it. He went back and watched all four recently and really liked Scream 3. What the? <laughs> so if he'd rank them now, it'd be There's one, three, one, thing. three, two, and four. Oof! I don't necessarily agree with that, but okay. All right, and uh, Nick Hammond writes in to say that uh, his best movie uh, or best movie, best memory about Scream Two was taking her girlfriend to this movie, and she was so scared she started crying and left the movie. And me being me, I stayed to see the rest of it. Bravo. Well, <laughs> Bravo. Awesome. Bravo. Bra- <laughs> Bravo, Nick. She's still crying in the bathroom to this day. Oh. There you go. I saw this movie when I was 12. Like, my parents yeah. took me when I was 12 well, I was to see this movie. Like, in the theater. In the theater, yeah. like, opening weekend. They took me to see this movie. Well, it was awesome. I could have been in that theater. No, uh, probably not. All right, so final thoughts, I guess, begin with me because I'm in this seat. Colin, what are your thoughts? Um, And write I, them when you're done. I'll tell you, I like Scream... Two, uh, because I mean, we're saying like, uh, you know, I like I like the screen movies. I think the chemistry of the people I still like. I don't like it as much as the first one. On this viewing, I recognize that it's uh, quite a step down from the first one. But you know, I I I hate the third one. Hate it. I think it's a travesty. I think they fucked it up. Part of that maybe because a guy named Aaron Kruger. Uh, yeah. Ended up rewriting or co writing. That seems like that was one of those movies where it's like, we got a fucking deadline and we're going to put this out. And Nev Campbell's like, I don't want to do this again. We're like, just come back for a couple of scenes, Nev. You know, I mean, it really does yep. feel rushed and it, it, I don't know, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. It doesn't feel the same as the other movies. And uh, Scream 4 just felt like it had a real mean streak to it that I really didn't get into. Um, Thanks again to Aaron Kruger. Yeah, but I think, you know, I mean, I think this is a decent movie because of the parts that work, I think work really well. Uh, so I like uh, I like that stuff. And, you know, I mean, I miss Wes Craven, you know? I mean, of the guys that I grew up with watching, you know, which would be John Carpenter, you know, uh, George Romero, David Cronenberg, you know, those guys, Toby Hooper and... Wes Craven's like the first one to actually die. It's like, man, yeah. you know, it really sucks. We have seen the last... Wes Craven movie um, and a lot of the stuff I know he I don't know if he ever really thought of himself as a horror filmmaker because you know he wanted to do stuff like music of the heart yeah yeah and uh, ni- uh, uh, what's the red eye yeah. you know which were pretty decent thrillers um, he had this there's like a theme in his movies and I don't want to go out too long about this but because uh, I recently watched uh, some of his movies again just to kind of you know like oh man you know at his passing and I watched Shocker, and I watched uh, My Soul to Take, which Ooh. I actually liked more this time around. I was like, oh, I actually you know, kind of dig this movie. But there's a theme going on there. Like, those are, like, the same movie, both written by him, mm, you know? Because yeah. sometimes he directs other people's, you know, stuff. But the idea that uh, it seems like this is a guy dealing with the idea that, like, somehow in your genes you can have evil. And can you be a good person if there's awfulness in your past you know and it's like what you know i know that there's something about his father uh because i've read you know some stories about he never actually explicitly says what but he you know says something like his father was a real bastard and blah 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 and it's like you know you watch shocker and it's like you know the kid is you know turns out horace pinker's his father and it's like are you going to be the same guy you and me are the same kid and like no i'm not and all that and And that does uh, carry over to my my soul soul to take take, does that too yeah 
So those are like the personal movies I think that he made. And the fact that he was able to, you know, he was prolific enough and had budgets to work with and was a pretty decent craftsman. Was he a great director or master of suspense? Yeah, it's debatable. Red Eye's pretty tense. I mean, I guess he knew what he was doing. I like Red Eye. But, you know, you also look at stuff like Cursed where, like, he made a movie and then had to fucking go back and reshoot the entire goddamn (laughs) thing. Yeah. And got tied up for, I don't know, two or three years fucking around with this thing that he, I don't even think he really liked. He seemed like he was a guy that you would hire to do stuff. Like, Scream feels like it was a for-hire job. Mm. You know, you're Wes Craven, and here's horror. Uh, you two go together, and, you know, and then it just turned into this fucking thing, you know. Um, but he was a really lucky guy, and I think because of that, you know, we have to say that he was one of the titans of the genre to establish himself with Last House. And to, you know, create a global phenomenon with Freddy Krueger and then again a global phenomenon with uh, Scream. I don't know who mm-hmm. else has done that. Yeah. And that's, uh, I guess it's. Yeah, he put his stamp down a couple of times. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I uh, uh, it's a recommendation for Scream 2. Here, here. That's great. May he rest. I'm going to pour it out. Can I pour it out? <laughs> here you go. One for my homie. Very right, Holly Europe. Um, yeah, I gotta say, I liked Scream 2 a lot more than I remembered. I was thinking, oh, God, this movie sucked. It was the music, right? No, yeah, it was the music. (laughs) It brought me back, right back to the 90s. No, I actually really liked this one. Like we said, um, I I loved the idea that it set the stage. I liked the theatrics of it. Um, and I, I gotta say, I loved Laurie Metcalf in this movie. She was freaking awesome. That's Jackie from Roseanne, or... Sheldon's mom from Big Bang Theory, Indeed. for whoever watches those. Um, whoever you may be who watches Big Bang Theory. <clears throat> that's me. Um, <laughs> no offense. <clears throat> sorry. Um, yeah, no, I thought she did amazing. I, I don't think people real, like really remember what a great job she did in this movie. She had the crazy eyes. She really did. I thought she was awesome. She was kind of the star for me, I mean, even though she didn't have a whole lot of screen time until the end, in classic Scream tradition. Um but yeah, I really liked it. I I would recommend for sure. Um, these movies have a special place in my heart. Kind of opened me up to horror back in my childhood. So yeah, I gotta say thumbs up for Scream Three or Two. Which, which is one's this? Two. <laughs> two. It doesn't Sorry, two. matter. It doesn't <laughs> matter. I love yeah. Scream Three. It's so good. Scream More Scream best. Three. What's <laughs> beer? Who's got beer? Scream Two. Good. Scream, yes. So, I remember when I started watching horror movies, I had this huge library of 70s, 70s being the most fucking hardcore, extreme shit you'd ever witness, 80s being these, you know, just gory, awesome special effects, and then the 90s. The neutered day. I like. Not I think known for its horror. Horror movies have been neutered since. They've been so fuck. Like now, they're barely like even this. Like what? It's rated R because it says fuck a bunch of times. It's not rated R for any of the gore or violence. Not in my mind. <laughs> I mean, what, blood spits out of some people's mouths and, like, I mean, it's it's fucking, like, we could pull off this gore. We could. There's nothing about this that is, is special effects at all. Uh, and, yeah, I know gore's not, like, the most important thing, but uh, okay. when you have a character say it in the movie, <laughs> I guess you should, like, deliver something. But he was talking about 80s movies. He wasn't talking about modern day movies that he was starring in like oh no our movies oh, oh no we got some blood on the knife and some fucking less than jake song playing and <laughs> sell that movie ticket the girls will bring their boyfriends it doesn't matter how good it is like fuck it um yeah this is i just think yeah scream was good because it was just taking a look at the whole genre, but no need for a fucking sequel at all. I mean, obviously they didn't have the story. Um, uh, yeah, I, I, mean, I don't need to go into it really. The, I don't like this fucking movie. I haven't, I liked Scream 1, and I tell you what, I haven't even watched Scream 1 since I saw the unrated director's fucking cut, and where's that? I don't know. Where is that? Yeah. There's VHS is out there. Yeah, it's the only I was thing. looking at them today. Oh, they're like, like $100. Oh, no, I found one for like 10 bucks. No, the fuck. One. Yeah, 10 bucks I on like, bet like it. an Amazon, which I'm going to be like, oh, I might have to buy that. No box. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but, no you know, but still, yeah, other than that, dude, the, this whole, the whole, I, 
I don't call it a resurgence of of slasher. It was just like one last fucking like just one last uh uh, go of it. One last grab of money. Like, ah, oh, we'll get these suckers one last time. They'll remember Halloween, all these old movies, and ah, oh, they'll they'll eat it up. These stupid kids. The whole library. We got to sell to these kids. Yeah. So yeah, I fucking don't like these movies. Uh, I like Scream One, but even that, I don't revisit until they fucking release that unrated cut again. Because like, yeah, fuck you. What the hell? <laughs> Why not? <laughs> Why not? The kids cut anniversary. spill right out of his. Oh, oh it was humble. awesome. It was awesome, awesome dude. Awesome. And Good. even if they did a director's cut of this, what would it be like? I mean, a more gory uh, Randy death scene, actually. Was shot for this. And they it has over to be the, the black girl, like right. something. No, they overshot there, a lot was. of the scenes. They overshot the gore for this because they wanted to submit it to the MPAA. To you know, if we submit the overly gory version of it, then we can cut off. Like they put in a bunch of stuff they didn't want, and they're like, we submit this, we can cut away the stuff they think is bad and get the movie we want. And the MPAA like approved it, and I think they just cut it. Back. Only have oh. sound effects. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's all what Show it is. Nothing. This is like seeing a knife in a mirror with just a squishing sound, a slashing sound, or looking at it's looking at Courtney Cox, and you're hearing a slashing sound. It's just like this is fucking stupid. You know, you're not even showing what's supposed to be horrifying. You have something running up, and then you're cutting to a character and hearing. It's like oh fucking boy. Make sure all the lights are on. You know, you don't want kids to be too scared. All the actors have to be seen from all their angles. And, like, yeah, it's too fucking pretty for a horror movie. It's just not a good horror movie. It's a waste of time. Tom. <laughs> God damn it, Sean. <laughs> Son of a bitch. <laughs> I mean, like, you. this is a freak show movie, huh? God damn it, man. That's hey, cool. Um, hey, if we can bring in... I'm not even going to say because I'm it, pointing fingers at people. Ooh, and on, don't say it. If so we can I bring mean, in some of the shit we brought in, Scream 2 is a true. freak show that's movie. That's true. <laughs> that's true. This is like up there with like Brent and his like picking like Tango and Cash. You know, it's like... <laughs> Three it's like, dragons. It's like Scream 2 is like... It's not a bad movie, all right? But <laughs> if you're going to show a Scream movie... If you're going to watch a Scream movie, watch Scream 1. And then if you like Scream 1, you know what? Watch I Know What You Did Last Summer. <laughs> <laughs> because Scream... Then stop I mean, it, Urban I, Legends. I mean, I agree. I agree. Right, you know, Urban like, Legends, we didn't even mention that. Just, like, yeah. I wonder movie. why we didn't... Another movie I like. Why didn't we I like mention... Did we movies. mention Disturbing Ugh. Behavior? Was that, does that count? Like, that's more of a thriller than like, a horror like, movie. But still, I like what yeah. you're thinking. They're still pretty people. The faculty... Just like go like, like don't watch Scream Two. Just watch another horror movie from the nineties. And then H two O. But like okay, so like here here's what you do. You go like okay, I'm, I like Scream One. So then watch I know what you did last summer. I like I know what you did last summer. Don't watch I know what you did last summer too. Or I still I know still what know what you did, what did last summer. summer. Or is, I still know what you did last summer. <laughs> then maybe go back to like maybe watch Urban Legends if Urban you like Legends, that. Yeah. All right, fine. Where fine. do we go from there, Tom? I like this. Keep fine, <laughs> fine. All right, go to Scream Two, <laughs> and then you can go to. I still know what you did last summer, and then Urban, Urban Legends. Legends. So you remember what changed uh, the game? Jeepers Creepers. <laughs> <laughs> Jeepers Creepers. <laughs> uh, yeah. uh, so like, it's Fuck. it's just like it's it's an average movie. Oh, well, it's below average. Yeah. <laughs> so if, if if my bar for average movie is like Rain of Fire, it's definitely below Rain of Fire. Fucking Rain of Fire. It's like one dragon on the track scale. Half um, a dragon. It's like which half? Uh, half. So like, I want to know, Sean. Like, this is going to get into your review. So like, this is the answers that I want from well, you. Do you recommend it, or recommend do you just or? like? No, I, after, I, no. He recommends it after all those other movies. <laughs> That's his recommend. Yeah, so yeah, it's it's recommended at you like it's that's my you know. Like if it's like if you're say say you're on the couch and you don't want to move and it's on TBS or bounce. Because it's black people. There's not enough black bounce. people in this movie for it to be on bounce. No, and there's enough there's at least one black person. Is that all it takes? Yeah. Well, I didn't know bounce had a criteria. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. They play Conan yeah. the Barbarian. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So like if it's on bounce and you're like, I don't want to change the channel. Okay. All right, you can watch it. 
But like, you Thank know, you like, giving me permission. like getting up and like putting this, like willingly, like going out and buying it or willingly putting it in, your, that'd be too much. Effort, <laughs> I don't feel. Uh, but if it's like on TV and you're like, eh, shit, I ain't got nothing better to do. Hey, to be fair, Sean only spent five ninety nine on this dish. Yeah, the that's price too much. Tag too, is much still on it. too much. Too much. Too <laughs> much. Like I honestly, I honestly thought like it's like, hey man, I watched Scream One. I like Scream One. So I want I want to watch Scream Two, but I don't have enough free time. So I'm gonna f- force this upon my friends. Or I, I want to know why you actually picked this movie as opposed to like Scream One or Scream Three or. What? What? Why? I think we just, yeah, I think, I think, I think we just spent a whole yeah, I, hour I know, I explaining know, why I, know, I picked I this movie. He said it was his favorite one. It's his favorite one. That's it's fucked up. That's weird. <laughs> you just you're in a weird place. <laughs> you're in a weird place, Sean, and we'd like to help you. Um, I need you to he come with me. Blu-ray, he just lights the Blu-ray on fire. It's like this is for your own good. And uh, yeah, we'll see you outside. It's time to talk with somebody. <laughs> Uh, when I was, like I said, when I was 12 years old, uh, my parents took me to go see Scream 2 in the theaters. Scream 2 is, as far as I can remember, it has to be, is my first big screen horror movie experience. That's it. That's it. Now that does obviously color, it co- It would color anybody's viewing with, you know, just a little something. But I, I've since revisited this movie multiple times. I, I I've seen this I mean, me and my brothers will just sit around and quote this movie or the entire Scream series. Like, this is this. I came of age, as it were, in this era. As you guys were sitting around listing these movies, these are like, you know, not the only movies I love. So don't just judge me on what I'm about to say. But I do love some 90s slasher horror movies. You you, goddamn I know what you did last summer. Urban Legend, H2O. I really like these movies. I mean, it was the time I grew up. I mean, these were, uh, they had to be the first you know, horror movies that I saw. I mean, I've since gone back and especially with you guys kind of explored the origins of these movies, but this is what I grew up with. This is like, I'm a nineties kid. Like my taste is in this stuff. I think it's warranted for this movie. Um, I mean, scream is obviously it's a classic. It's uh, when it came out, it did, it did so much for the horror genre. I mean, uh, a movie where, you know, it can look back and examine the things that came before it, comment on it, uh, have characters in the movies commenting on it. Like, that, that was a big deal. Uh, Scream 2, going for it, I think for me, why I like this more than Scream 1, and it's close because mm. I really like Scream 1, but Scream 2 has the advantage of um, not, I mean, your characters are already set. Like, uh, you come in, you know these characters, they're all back, like, and everybody came back for this one, and it was, it did come out, like, so close to the end of the first one, where you could look at it as, like, this one made, and it made a lot of money, this one made a lot of money, let's get the sequel out there right now, and I have no doubt that that was a driving force behind it, but this movie is also something that, considering everybody came back, there was a lot of care put into this movie. I mean, it is, it's only the, it's the second movie of the series that Kevin Williamson actually wrote the whole thing. Like, he was there for it. This was his movie. This was Wes's movie. The cast comes back. Um, it, you know, it's, it's a family thing. And I think that love comes through on screen. Um, I love the themes of the movie. Like I said, I love the overall. It's more theatrical than Scream was. And I like that. I mean, you get, like, just in the tones. And also, it literally has a theater piece in the middle of the movie. Um, uh, and I mean, that that's, uh, I love, uh, the reveals of the characters at the end. Like, I, I mean, you know, you get the, I think you get what you got before. I mean, you get the character who loves horror movies. He's kind of, like it says, it's taking their love of horror movies one step too far. Um, I, I like the story of, you know, it, it's still all stemming from Sydney's mother. Like that's what has caused her pain throughout her life. And it just keeps coming back at her. I like the reveal of Billy's mom. I love Lori Metcalf as Billy's mom. Like, I think she does. Like Holly said, I think she does a fantastic job. I love the fact that her character was kind of running, you know, in and out throughout the movie and then is revealed at the end as being as being Billy's mom. And she's got crazy eyes, which work really well at the end of this thing. I think her motivation is... Uh, I, I think her motivation is warranted. Um, I, the, I think the writing is still, I mean, even though writing on this movie, like a lot of it done as they were going because they had to, but I still think like even with a few things they had pushing against them, like they made a really good slasher movie, a really good horror movie. 
Um, I really love this movie, and I would definitely recommend it. I think it's uh, top tier um, as far as slasher movies go. Um, <laughs> hey, man, you think what you want. I love this movie. I love Scream 2. Um, I definitely recommend it. One of my favorites. All right, so that's Scream 2 for the Saturday Night Freak Show. Uh, next week, it's going to be my pick, and we're going to watch a movie that was suggested by a Twitter user, yeah. Global Icon 2012. We're going to watch Lamora, A Child's Tale of the Supernatural, a very obscure movie from 1973. So get on the YouTubes or whatever you have to do and see if you can find it or buy the DVD from Synapse. No films. Blu-ray? Not yet. But it's mastered in 24K or whatever, you know. 24K, 10, 10, damn. Sorry, 24K. 1080p, 20, 24 Shit. frames per second. They move yeah. quick. Uh, so that's, uh, you can get prepared. So that's next week on the Saturday Night Freak Show. And until then, the basement is going dark. <laughs>